Okay, uh, continuing with Paul Gradenwood's response, um, I discussed this first paragraph for a little bit in my last video, um, and I said I would approach a problem um, from that that I offered in that video earlier. Um, I'm not going to do it right now. Um, I think I'm going to wait until Paul uh, has an opportunity to respond. Right now I'm still uploading that video to YouTube, so I just wanted to continue looking at his uh, description. So he says the observer, um, the observer O follows the uh, diagonal line, which was uh, x equals negative c over 6t in his uh, description, and not the uh, vertical line, which was x equals 0 in his description. The round of equal velocity with respect to the origin, that would be um, something like this, where all of the particles in there would be r equals c t over 6. Um, that would describe all of these r at different times where t was going up this way. So that's what he's calling the round of equal velocity is with respect to the origin of the drawing with the center uh, vertical line. Good. That line is not around O. So, so this is not, this is O, um, but around the origin as it is drawn. When I say there are no Lorentz transforms, I mean all is drawn in the frame of the origin. Okay, that's fine. As a result, the lines of simultaneity that you added are not horizontal for O. Yeah, the lines of simultaneity for O that I added, uh, which is not, it's hard to, let's continue up that line and figure out where those lines of simultaneity, of course this is a 3D graph, I'm just going to draw the lines imagining a central uh, portion of that. So the lines I think would be like this and using that point would be like this and using that point would be like that. Okay, so the, what's he say here? The lines of simultaneity that you added these were the ones that I added, are not horizontal for O and not horizontal for A. What? Those lines are horizontal for O, but they're not horizontal for A. Wait, A. Oh, wait, A. Okay, the lines over here that I added were, this is where I put A, and those lines were, those lines of simultaneity would have been like that. And those would have been, those were not horizontal, but uh, just simultaneous, uh, having t, t sub a equals constant. Those are the blue lines, and the green lines would have been t sub o equals constant. A Lorentz transformation of the drawing would transform the lines of simultaneity for O to horizontal lines, and then other lines get slanted. That's correct. If I learn, if I did a Lorentz transformation of this, then all of the events, um, I could do it. Uh, I could do it around this point. In which case, actually, let me let me add a new layer here and imagine the uh, light cones coming from the what would be kind of in our description the big bang event and imagine so what's going to go on here uh, this point is going to be moved um, along a hyperbola hyperbola this point is going to be moved along a hyperbola
hyperbola this way, this point along a hyperbola this way, this point along a hyperbola this way. I'm sorry, this is taking a little bit long, but I'm putting it on another layer so I can actually move the move the origin. So that's and uh, the uh, that circle line is going to get confused with this. But so that is part of it. And of course, this event is moved over here. This event is moved over here. All the points on O get slanted that way. All the points on A will get slanted a little bit further that way. So everything, if when a, O becomes vertical, then everything else gets slanted over. Okay, now I mentioned that I was putting it on a different layer. That was so I could do this, put that on the origin over there. Do the same thing with the events down on this side. And imagine parabolas for this event coming up this way. And this, oops, should be a little bit more. Probably should have erased that, but this event going this way. Uh, this event, oh man, I need to centralize those. Let's draw a, draw a line coming down here parallel to x equals zero so that I can get those hyperbolas as nice as I can. I want one to come up here, have its peak there in the horizontal line coming down on both sides. This is really clumsy. Have the peak right there coming down on both sides from this event, having the peak right there coming down on both sides. And from this event, having the peak right there coming down on both sides. This is not very good because these should be asymptotic to the to the speed of light over here. So I didn't draw these well, but you kind of get the general idea. This event will come up here. This event comes up here. This event comes up here. And this event comes up here. Everything else follows uh, all of the other lines. This gets tilted. Uh, and the Big Bang event moves up here so that uh, Basically, this this time does not look as long as this is right here. And let's draw arrows on there so we make no mistakes. So yeah, so those that will uh, straighten everything out. And I will move that Lorentz transformation back out of the way so that it's around that origin over there. So a Lorentz transformation of the drawing would transform the lines of simultaneity for O to horizontal lines, and then other lines get slanted. That's correct. When the Lorentz transformation is done, so this line becomes vertical, then these green lines would become horizontal. On the other hand, if the uh, Lorentz transformation was done so that the lines of A became vertical, or so that the blue line, well, I didn't draw a blue line there, so I'll draw that blue line. So that this line became vertical, then all of these blue simultaneity planes would become horizontal. He wants to focus on events that happen on the light cone. Okay, so let's neaten up our diagram by removing those Lorentz transformations and focus on events that happen on the light cone. So the observation of every event on that light cone is simultaneous for O. OK, this is a different kind of dis different description of simultaneous than I was thinking of. But yes, um, this event and this event um, actually Every one of these events, this event, and and that event, all of these events are observed. Every event on that light cone are observed at the same moment for that observer. That's true. So yeah, 
the observation of every event on that light cone is simultaneous for O. The events happened at different time. Events happened at different time, and our light traveled a different time, but they arrived, the observation, at the same moment. Why does Paul use the round of the same speed around the origin and not the round with the same speed around point O? That's a good question. Um, and he's perfectly legitimate doing that. That's fine. I called it, in my last post, I called this idea one, three circles from world line x equals zero. I merely made the point, if we choose to look at those three circles of matter from the observer at point O, we'll get some information. We won't find that any of those circles have constant distance. We won't find any of those circles have constant redshift. And we won't find that any of those circles have constant speed from O. That's because none of those circles are centered from O. So I didn't have any objection to using them. I just... Uh, didn't want to draw any false conclusions from using them. So, okay, he says he reasoned that the speed that an object is traveling along the, reason that the speed of an object traveling along the, I guess this green line away from the origin is traveling through space with that speed. Uh-huh, that is why I state that the point on the origin is respect is at rest with respect to space. Okay, this, there's, uh, why I state that the point, and I, that needs to be explained. Um, okay, but he's explaining it. Um, in the drawing, the world line of the origin is vertical. Okay, vertical world line. A point of the origin only when you start with a moving original ball that with that primordial movement exploded you would have some difference I exclude that for now okay he says I read let's start over uh, that seems like gobbledygook uh, right now but I'm going to try to go through this. I reasoned that the speed that an object has traveling along the slant away from the origin is traveling through this space with that speed. Okay, we've agreed it's traveling away from the origin at velocity equals negative c over 6. That's what we agreed. Okay, I reason that the speed of an object traveling along the slant line away from the origin is traveling with that speed, with that speed. Um, why do I use the round of the same speed around the origin, not around? Why do I use the round of the same speed around the origin and not around point O? Instead of using the same speed around point O, which would produce a different uh, set of rings, he's using the speed around the origin. Um, so yeah, so the velocity of this guy is going to be c over negative c over six. That is why I state that the point in the origin is at rest with respect to space. Okay, so velocity equals zero for the point at the origin. Um, in the drawing, the world line of origin is vertical. And then only when you start with a moving original ball that with the primordial movement exploded, you would have some difference. But I, I'm sorry, there's no clarity here in what he's saying. Um, I'm kind of speculating about his meaning. He's not uh, being explicit enough in his words to know. Um, 
when you start with a moving original ball that with primordial movement exploded have some difference between and so let's make a conjecture at least about what difference he's looking at difference between no I have no idea um, between this and this because he's made several he's made references to the the slanted and the vertical the C over 6 line and the vertical line he's mentioned traveling through space um, he's talked about the point in the origin being at rest with respect to space um, in the drawing the world line of the origin is vertical um, and obviously the world line of this is slanted uh, and starting with a moving original ball with the primordial movement exploded he's excluding a difference between question mark and question mark uh, and he's not specifying what I guess between this and this, um, there is a difference. It's a difference as, obviously, it's a difference of velocity from zero to c over six. And if he's excluding that difference, then he's wrong. He should not exclude that difference. He goes on to say he reasons that the time dilation between that objects really experience, first of all, um, objects don't really experience time dilation. They <clears throat> they experience time. Uh, they see other objects time dilated, but their experience of their own time is is pretty consistent. Um, and they do not experience anything uh, time dilation dependent on the speed with respect to the origin only. Um, no, because ev uh, not not in special relativity. Um, in special relativity, every object is in at its own origin. Every object that experiences anything is in the here and now. That is your experience. You are here, you are now. x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 0, t equals 0. That's that you're at the you're at your own origin at every given experience. Okay, that dilation sets the so you don't so it's not dependent on there's no dependency on some that your experience is not dependent at all on some distant origin. Okay, I'll have to finish this video. We're up to about 20 minutes. I may have to edit out a little bit of silence. So this might this video might be shorter than 20 minutes, but um, I will continue reading in a moment. Thanks for watching.